Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to talk about Copic green combinations today. Copic doesn't do the best job with greens, I have to say. And I've got all these frogs to color, and I thought it'd be a great time to maybe really dig in a little deeper and try out some green combinations that I've never used before. So I have my little bag of greens and a color combo chart. This is one of those that you can get for free. Just order them over on my teaching site, art-classes.com. There are a bunch of free things over there, and this one comes with many pages in the color combinations download. And I just sat down with my greens and started playing around with them. And the difference between these first two was using the same color for the light and the medium, but changing the dark being from on the left hand side, it's a warmer green and on the right, it's a cooler green just to see what I liked. And that's one of the things that these color sheets are made for because it's kind of fun to have something organized to swatch your colors out on and to try them on a small image. So you're not spending a gob of time trying to get some colors to, to swatch out and see how they blend. But you can also put these in a notebook and save them for future reference. So you have the swatching already done and you can try new combinations from that. And I've just kind of done some really simple shading on this little tack. You don't have to do it quite that advanced in trying to put highlights and shadows and things on it. You could just go top to bottom or bottom to top to do your blend. But you know me, I'm an overachiever, so I had to do that. Originally, on the first couple, I was trying to leave my whites, and then I decided after that, I would just draw the white highlights back in with a pen since I had one. So I stopped overachieving after a while. And a couple of these colors are ones that I really haven't used the light one in this combination. I can't remember if I've ever actually used it before. I've bought all the markers because I wanted to come up with the hex chart, but it doesn't mean that I've actually used them all. So there's that, right? So uh, yeah, G20, there you go. You're finally gonna get a little bit of use here. I probably have used it at some point, but I just can't remember the last time. So I can look at the combinations that I've, I've got here, and I liked the cooler one better than the warmer one for frogs. I also like this combination for an old frog because I think I could make one of my frogs old. I was kind of thinking about these. I, I thought, well, let me just, you know, use some of these colors that I've already tested out. And that G20 was just one that I thought I should probably check out and see. So there you go. This is the frog that I'm going to make an old frog. And this is the frog set, from, the, the brand new frog set from Art Impressions. Uh, links to all the supplies are in the doobly-doo and stuff. But I am coloring him in and I wanted him to have a white belly. So I'm just using a colorless blender marker to soften that out. And then I'm just going to throw in the dark colors. I was trying a little bit to work around some of the little spots. He's got like little warts and things on him. And I debated whether or not I was going to totally worry about that or not. By the time I put the midtone color in, that stuff had disappeared. But you could also put warts back in using the colorless blender marker to give him a little bit of texture and stuff. But I liked this combination as an old frog. And I don't know if frogs actually change their color over time. But, you know, I know I've changed my color. I'm, I don't have that like baby fresh cute skin that I had when I was a little girl. So maybe frogs have the same thing. I don't know, but he's kind of old and chunky, kind of like me. So he reminds me of just an old frog. So there you go. And as I'm adding my mid-tone color, I found that I was going to have to add more of the light as well to kind of create that transition from one color to another. And I do that a lot when I'm doing my coloring. It's just constant readjusting, adding another layer of something, you know, re-blending something, especially as things dry, they dry differently than they go on at first. So a lot of times I have to go back in and add extra onto whatever I'm coloring. 
So then we have this tall frog and he's standing on his back legs. I do not know that any frog or toad has ever been seen standing on his hind legs. Have you ever seen that? I think when I was a kid and we had like there were people doing science experiments and stuff and uh, dissecting frogs and all that. I think I saw stretched out frogs, but I don't know that they stood up on their own. And yes, I have never dissected a frog. That's just something I somehow avoided. I remember like having to get notes written about the frog dissection lesson because I just turned my stomach to even think about doing that. And somehow I got out of it. I don't know how. I don't remember what the excuse was that was written on the note. I just remember it was a really big deal trying to get out of hurting a frog. That just really bugged me. And I also like don't like squishy things. And that was just like going to be way too much. That was just too much over the top for me. So yeah, I never did have to dissect a frog in all of my, my years in school. So that's my crazy long, tall frog story, which was pretty useless. <laughs> but there you go. A little something to chat about. So this one, I didn't end up liking the dark green as much in that combination. So that's something I'm going to write on my little sheet for myself. Maybe I'll put notes on the back. You know, if I'm doing a frog, use a lighter green with that combination for the dark color because... I found that to be a little bit much for what I was thinking of. And then this is that last combination with that really soft green for the center of the frog. And he goes all the way to a dark green as well. And his greens match a little bit better, I think. So I didn't mind the dark quite as badly. I'm not going to show all the coloring for the rest of it because that would take forever. But I did use like a bunch of oranges and purples because I thought that would be a fun combination. And I made a light cake because I was originally going to make a chocolate cake and that seemed like it was going to disappear and the frog's legs would just kind of blend into it and everything. So the lighter one seemed to work very well. So there's my crazy card for today with my crazy stories. And over on Instagram, I've got this little froggy, crazy, nutty card in a speed video if you're interested in going to see that. If it's not been posted by the time you go look, it will be shortly. And I will see you guys again very soon with another video because that's how I roll. Take care and leave me a comment with your frog stories and I'll chat with you later. Bye-bye.